Hello, welcome to another DHIS2 tutorial on management and administration of DHIS2. My name is Kenneth and today I'm going to take you through um, how to create users, user roles and uh, user groups. I must apologize uh, for the background noise. I am recording this uh, video during the day and there is a lot of noise at the background so please pardon me for that. So uh, let's log in. Um, I'm sure if you followed along, I brought, I made a couple of videos on one how to install the uh, DHIS2 on Windows, then also how to set up uh, the uh, organizational units. So when you log in, of course, you are set to the dashboard. Here we see the menu apps here. So this is where we are going to, if we scroll down, you can check for the users. This is where we are going to manage all the users that would have access to the system and what are their roles. So if we just go to, before we go to the users here, yeah, let's just go to the roles here yeah, and see um, what we have here. We are seeing two roles. One is called data collectors. The other one is super user. And you can create a whole lot of roles. Now, what are roles? Basically, these are kind of like permissions uh, that you assign when you create a user you assign that user to a certain role like this person is an administrator which means the administrator uh, the administrator role has some certain uh, privileges that they can perform whereas when you assign a user say you create a user the name is Mike and assign him a data collector the data collector role has certain uh, permissions things that they can do that uh, others cannot do so here if we look at the rules here let's just take a look at what the data collector role is here out of the box so here you have the the name of the rule you know description of the rule and uh, here you see metadata so basically here these are the permissions these are the things that they can do whenever you see something is checked which means they have access to to that particular feature so in terms of the metadata here we see all these are unchecked the only thing that this the data collector person has access to in terms of metadata is the dashboard section they can you know add updates they can delete you know metadata then you also have the data values here um, they can or add or update then we have a couple of uh, event charts and reports so those are the things that they can do in terms of metadata under the apps which apps do they have access to so the dhis2 has different apps you have the maintenance app the browser catch app you know the capture app dashboard app you know data entry app so for the data collector tool one key uh, app is the data entry app so that they will be able to have access to this app the data entry app so that they can collect data and uh, submit in the system then they also have access to the dashboard they can capture they can use the capture app so uh, if we just scroll to the top here these are all the apps that they have access to here you can see data entry app you know event reports mobile configuration uh, data administration and so on so those are all the various apps that are there so here you basically create a role and select which roles you know the user can have access to then you have here again the tracker app for now just don't bother too much about all of them later uh, you you get to understand more what each of them do then you have import export features so here you can the this user i mean this role have the privileges to import data but they cannot export the data they cannot do a whole lot of these things then in terms of system configuration you see none of them they cannot do anything in there because they are just data collectors here yeah. all right so we cancel this okay so let's look at the super users so here we see the rows of the super users here yeah. all right so um even though we are seeing that they are just checked this way you know that it's only few of the apps that are checked the super users actually have access to all of these applications here 
that we are seeing and they have access to all of this information so uh, but if you go and create other roles then you have to come and check which you know privileges that they have access to example we can create a role here and call it say this role is going to be manager and uh, give it a description manager and uh, here we would have to select basically what they have to have access to since this is a new rule that we are uh, creating the the default super user as it comes have access to everything so here we can say hey this manager would have access to these defaults you know rules public and that and you can choose which applications you know the manager has access to and you can select let's say say pivot table reports the dashboard you can select whatever you want to have i mean whatever applications or permissions you want the that particular role to have import export features so here i mean whilst we're going whilst you're exploring dhs to later on you come back to this and just check you know the permissions you set on the various uh, uh users so here you can create a uh, role so here we've created a role here called manager you can go back later again and say okay fine if we want to add more to more rules more permissions to this uh role we can set those ones approve data you know that you know delete sms if you want you can set that okay so now that we have created the rules you know here we've created one rule called manager we can actually now create a user uh, I mean and add give him the role of a manager so basically we are saying that the user we are going to create is going to be a manager so in our DHIS2 currently we have just one um, user there if we click on this user it's called admin and you can see the details about the about the user the first name is admin that and what is important here is the available rules so here we see now we have the data collector and manager then we have the selected rules is super user so we are saying this admin is a super user and uh, basically then here again we have to assign the organization which they would have access to okay so we created the organizational units and uh, in that organizational unit you can select what unit the user have access to so let's go and create a user here we'll come to explain that more so we come to users here and currently we only have the admin there so we click on the plus icon and we can create a user this user we are going to call him let's say test user okay uh, you can provide an email there it's not compulsory provide a, a password it has to be eight characters long minimum and the same password again then we can provide the name the son name so that will be let's say just call it test uh, user and uh, after that what is more important those other information you can fill in later uh, so here we created the role now we've seen this role here the manager role so we want to assign this user as the manager then we can select the manager role here and uh, here this is what is important here again so here you have the data capture and maintenance organizational unit so basically if you the org units that we spoke about in the previous videos here when you create a unit let's say you have an organization that it has different units let's say um it has the gis unit it has the hr unit you know the let's say the public relations you know units you can create all those units right and in each of those units you can decide that this user i'm creating is only going to be within this unit so here you can select that this user will only have access to this unit so when you select if there's any sub units below so example if we select this south if there's any sub units below which is bo bong member pujang which means that user would have access to all of those sub units 
so if you want the user to have access to all units you can just select the top level um, organizational unit so when you are creating your organizational units there are different ways how you want to handle it so it's it depends on the uh, your use case say example if you are creating if you are setting this up for school and you want you know each school like you know here you can have your lowest unit let's say this is going to be school or this is going to your lowest unit is going to be a department and so you can assign users to what they can have access to similarly here we can set this at national or we just select here say we just want the user to have access to this particular unit here all right so for now we we'll leave it at the top level and uh, show more options here which means the user can search the organizational units the units you want the user to search you can uh, select here again the same uh, so if we have created groups you can assign the users to a group you know say you create a group called hr and you just assign that user to the group hr so that means when you are creating data sets or whatever you can just assign who have access to this you know data sets or to this data you can see hr has access to the data so that is a group that you have created and this user is part of that group so we'll create for now and later we'll come and modify this user's role so you just click on save and that user is created it's called test user and if we log out and log in with that test user we'll see how his role is so here we enter the username test user and the password we use to create okay so now we log in as test user so if we look at the applications the user have access to now remember it's only limited we set the data entry dashboard capture data visualization and menu management these are the applications we want the user to have access to and that is really much what they can do so if we wanted to change the role of this user here to you know have access to more features then we can go and uh, as a as a super administrator log in and provide the various capabilities uh, whatever permissions the user have access to so let's log out again and log in as the administrator as the super user here and uh, we go to the user groups so the user groups so let's go back to the user management and uh, now we go to the user group so we have created the user roles we have created users let's look at the user group currently we don't have any group user group is basically a way of grouping users you know into like you have an organization you have different you know let's say departments you know so here you can say we are going to create ict department we are going to create gis unit we are going to create public relations so here we can create a user group and call this one the first one we can just say say hr um and uh the code will be let's say hr and the users we have here so these are the users we have on our system currently so you can decide that hey we want this user to be a member of that group right so um you can select that user if you have a whole lot of users in here you can select them and add them to that group and similarly one user can belong to so many groups right so here you can save that and we created a group there let's create another one we call let's say this will be the gis uh say department okay say gis and uh the users let's say okay this user these two users they all belong to that group right gis department and uh here you also see now available user groups that you can add groups in groups <laughs> basically so here you can add this hr to the gis unit this is more uh relevant important i mean when you are dealing with like 
you create a group and in that group you have sub subgroups so like you have sub units so like you have let's say the you can create a group called say the hr and uh, you create subgroups say maybe the first subgroup will be say west wing east wing north wing and west east wing and south wing they are all under the hr so you have subgroups under the main group and uh, let's say what we are creating here this gis department you know this is the you know sub unit let's say this was west gis department you can add that to it and uh, the users that will be uh, in the GIS department will also have access to the subgroups. All right, so this one will leave it as it is. We're not going to add it there. So there you have the groups we have created the GIS department. Like I said, these are the groups you create. You can go back to the users, and if we click on the user, this user we created, yeah, this test user, you can see the groups that this user belongs to. So if we go right to the bottom here, show more options, you can see here that this user belongs to the HR and GIS department. All right. So when creating uh, a, a a a user. You can assign also here let's say this user only belongs to the gis department then you can select that so by just double clicking you know you deselect double clicking select deselect so um that is it for the users roles and permissions now always remember that these rules you can go and modify them if you don't have if a particular rule doesn't have access to certain things you can go and change them and once you change them that becomes available uh, for all the users who are assigned to that role so that is it for creating users roles and permissions thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe and uh, for future videos